So yesterday, it's been what, 10 days, two weeks, uh, here in England, in a part of the country called Lancashire, there's a, a town called St. Michael's on the River Weir. And about two weeks ago, a 45 year old mother of two, a very nice lady, um, appearance wise, very you know, good looking woman. Uh, that's not relevant. I don't know why I'm raising it, but I'll carry on now. Um, I think it's relevant because the media will give more attention to good looking victims, disappearances. It's, it's sad, but it's true. And it's relevant to what I'm going to say. So two weeks ago, she went for a walk with her doggy at nine o'clock in the morning and uh, down by the river and disappeared. They found a dog who was dry. They found her mobile phone on the bench and they didn't find any evidence of where she's gone. They've dredged the river. They've used divers. They've done a, a police search in the river in the area around it. They even searched a bit of the sea where the river comes out into the Irish Sea. Now, we've all been following this case very closely because it's an absolute mystery. It's, uh, it's a disappearing into thin air of a human being. And um, I can't help thinking of parallels with Madeleine McCann. Now, I wonder how many of the Lancashire police involved who haven't found Nicola were, you know, in the last decade saying, oh, stupid Portuguese police. If uh, that happened in Britain, we'd have found Madeleine McCann straight away. Idiot Portuguese police. And she was a three-year-old girl. Here we have a, a grown-up 45-year-old woman, a much bigger physical asset, and she's disappeared into thin air. Completely gone. Now, We've all been following the story and her partner, I can't remember his name, looks like a normal guy. He's been on TV. He's done appeals. Um, the, the police and the family have released, I think, a list of 10 facts. They call them facts, but we have to take it with a pinch of salt. This is what they're telling us. Saying that the partner was in the house all day under CCTV. Um, you know, it is sad. Um, Nine times out of ten, when a person disappears or is murdered or vanishes into thin air, nine times out of ten, it's the partner, the husband, the wife, um, the partner that is guilty. Now, correlation does not imply causation, and past uh, statistics do not prove a current, present, ongoing case. But uh, I'm sure Lancashire police have very good reasons to believe it's not the partner. And um, if it's not the partner, then what happened? I'm going to give you guys my theories. Um, I think they're quite logical. But um, before I do, I want to also criticize Lancashire police. Yesterday, they did something very strange. Um... You know, the whole nation is wondering, who who done it? Who did it? Where is she? And uh, Lancashire police released a statement saying, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Nicola Bully was a high-risk missing person because, and get this, they actually said this in a public statement. Yeah, 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 she was depressed. She was having problems with alcohol. And we were called to a domestic disturbance two weeks ago. And no one was arrested at the domestic disturbance. Now, many people in the media are calling it victim blaming. Now, I think it's too quick to call Nicola Bully a victim. No one on the planet has a clue where she is. Let's get the crazy theories out of the way first. Um, let's put on the tinfoil hat and go through some of the theories that are maybe true, but probably not. Theory number one. She disappeared on purpose and she's moved to Australia or wherever. She's living in Belarus. She's in the Congo. She's somewhere in Mauritania. You know, she's gone. And she wanted to disappear. I mean, it's it could happen. The chances of that having happened are not zero. But uh, I think it's extremely unlikely. She had her whole life. She had two children. Um, and, uh, yeah... It's unlikely that a mother of two would just 
abandon everyone, including her children. These are blood relatives. You know, people abandon their partners and disappear forever, but they're not blood relatives. I don't think she'd have done that. But then again, I, here's the key words. I don't think, because I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Now, not only has the police been giving more and more ominous threats, anger at the public, how dare you come up with your speculative theories, speculation is hurting the family, if you don't know, don't talk about it, very kind of like, shut up, we're the professionals, and your amateur sleuthing, I'm not very familiar, sleuth, your amateur sleuthing is doing more harm than good. And I'm reading this going, interesting that the police say that. The family are not idiots. They know that the biggest story in Great Britain right now, which it is, will attract bad theories, good theories, crazy people, nutters, schizoid types, people saying horrible things, people writing terrible things to the family. It's 2023. It's not 1993. The internet has amplified and exaggerated everything. And uh, part of being a grown-up these days is understanding that the internet is not real life. It's not the real world. What happens on the internet, what you read, what you see, what people say, it's like, uh, yeah, it's a virtual world and that's what it is. It's a virtual world. So the very police, Lancashire police, who I don't have a very good opinion of, I had a terrible experience in Burnley, uh, which is in the Lancashire County, but this is a bit further west near Blackpool, um, near Liverpool. Um, ish. You know, if you're looking at a very big map, it's not really near those places. It's in the countryside. Um, Preston, I think it's near. So the police saying, don't, don't speculate. And then they release a howler. Yep. Nicola Bully, guys, our theory that she fell in the river, had difficulties and drowned. It's probably, tr this is the police talking here. It's probably true, guys. Like, Come on, she was an alcoholic. And wow, wow, to say that about a missing person. And then on top of that, oh yeah, she was an alcoholic because she was depressed about the menopause. It's very personal, very intimate details. I'm about the same age as Nicola Bully. Anyone who's, you know, a grown up, you know, had a few life experiences, knows that life is not easy. Life is tough. It's not just the day-to-day -day struggles and challenges that can grind you down and make you feel it's not worth it. There's big existential problems we all have, our own mortality. Um, the fact that um, when you're over 40, you get new aches and pains every day. You're not getting younger. You're getting less attractive. Nobody turns around and wolf whistles you in the street anymore. No one's attracted to you anymore. And that's hard. That's hard to deal with. And the fact that someone in their mid-40s will turn to alcohol as a form of self-medication is no surprise. Great Britain is a drinking island. Drinking is part of our culture. Alcohol is deeply embedded here. Now, they could have stopped and said, yeah, yeah, she had problems with alcohol. We believe she fell in the river, had difficulties and drowned. But why do we need to know the specifics, the fertility issue specifics? Like, wow. People, you know, as I said earlier, talking about victim blaming. She's not a victim yet. She's a, a missing person. We don't know. Nobody knows. Now, I'll tell you my theory now. Um, because we don't need to make this video too long. We're going to keep it around 10, 12 minutes. I've seen many videos, five or six videos, and these are the ones that were filmed. So it must happen a lot with no one filming, of ladies at parties, jumping in a swimming pool, ladies getting married in the Caribbean, jumping in the ocean, ladies jumping in the hot tub, and I've seen five or six of these. What happens is a lady jumps into the ocean. She's wearing a wedding dress, many, many layers. The water throws the clothes over her head. There's like 10 different layers. She's 
struggling, thrashing about, and she cannot get to the surface because she's got six layers of fabric covering her. This is like if someone jumps into a swimming pool that has a, a cover, you know, the plastic sheet they put on the swimming pool. I've seen people, or was it a movie? But anyway, we all can logically see that how, that's, how, that's how it would go down. You jump into the water with things which can fold over your face and you, you, you're, you can't figure out which way is which. Do I pull it this way, that way? And you haven't got the strength to rip a hole. Luckily for the example, someone was filming. The ones that I saw, someone was filming. So after a few seconds of the woman struggling to remove the fabrics from her face so that she can breathe, she is rescued. People manage to get the clothes out of her airways. And she breathes and everyone breathes a huge sigh of relief. So, it's sad that the police would um, sully her, her good name. Um, and all it's done is caused more people to have more speculation. So, here's my speculation. And uh, again, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Nicola is alive. I hope she's had a, a crisis, you know, a mental crisis, and she's taken a few thousand pounds of cash and she's doing something off grid. I hope. Happy endings would be great. But um, if the police feel so confident that she was struggling with alcoholism, um, then it uh, it's not a, a great leap to see that um, maybe she had been drinking and she decided to take the doggy for a walk. Um, Maybe she'd been drinking very heavily, and uh, if she fell in the water, there's not just the cold shock of um, of the water, hypo, you know, hypothermia. There's a variety of things could have happened. She could have banged her head, so she was dazed. She was already maybe very intoxicated, and then her jacket uh, folded over and got knotted over her head. And when you're intoxicated, you're in very cold water, and you're panicking, you can lose consciousness very quickly, especially if you're dazed from banging your head or, you know, losing whatever. And my theory is, uh, unfortunately, um, ties with what Lancashire police are saying, I, I believe. You know, the family said in one of the 10 facts they released, she was a very strong swimmer. But uh, when you've got thick fabrics stopping you breathing, and if you're intoxicated, and if you've banged your head, and um, you're upside down in the mud and you don't know which way is up and you can't get the cloth off your face, it might be 45 seconds or maybe only one minute, maybe two or three minutes and someone can disappear. And uh, if there's no air in their lungs, they'll sink deep into the mud under all the branches and leaves and other detri detritus you get in a riverbed and um, that's probably what happened but uh, we don't know and um, she's not a victim yet there's no body there's no murder there's no evidence she's a missing person she's a mother she's still a person she's she may be alive she may be dead but um, I, the other theories people have, you know, like um, she's the victim of a hitman, uh, the partner being involved. Maybe. We don't know, but I very much doubt it. Um, I'm sure. Well, should I be sure? Maybe not. But I hope Lancashire police have exhausted the primary sources of investigation, which would be the partner and, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing, domestic sort of thing. So if they don't think so, can we trust them? But uh, I don't see the advantage to the investigation into telling us that she was a menopausal alcoholic. All I can think of is uh, an arrogant police force getting uppity and upset that people are quite rightly angry at them for not having solved it yet. 
And so they're like, yeah, well, you know, our theory, she's, a, she's an alcoholic menopausal woman. It's like, wow. Anyway, I hope Nicola is found safe and alive and that she's had a crisis and she comes home to her two children. I don't know how old her children are. They might be adults. You know, she's 45. Kids could be 25 years old. They could be five years old. I don't know. But um, very interesting and very weird of Lancashire Police. Thank you very much. This is Charlie Veach. Thank you for listening to me on this one.